Okay, so what we're going to do is go over the calculations needed uh, to fill in your lab sheet so you can hand in um, and get credit for this lab. All right, so the first thing on that lab sheet, says, or the first question on the lab sheet says, write a balanced equation for the reaction between copper and silver nitrate. So as we said uh, in class, this is the reaction um, that you want to write there. If you wanted to balance this, what you're going to do is you're going to put a 2 there, and then you're going to put a 2 there. Now we haven't talked about balancing equations yet, so you're just going to take my word for it. Um, and we'll talk a little bit later about where these, where these numbers come from. All right, so I'm going to use some values, uh, some hypothetical values, uh, to go over how you would do your lab sheet. So I'm going to assume that the initial mass of my copper wire was 1.84 grams. So before we submerged the copper into the solution, the mass was 1.84 grams. When I was done and I took that copper wire out of the solution after I rinsed off all of the silver, the mass was 1.63 grams. So if I want to calculate the mass of copper that was actually reacted in the lab, I would subtract those two and I would get 0.21 grams of copper. So that's the amount of copper that actually reacted in the lab. So you would take your mass of copper wire before you did anything, the mass of the copper after you washed all of the silver off of it, and subtract those two. All right, so um, what we also want to know is the mass of the silver that we got um, in the beaker uh, at the end of the lab when you took the beaker out of the oven. So if you have your beaker with the silver in the bottom, to find the mass of that silver in the bottom, you would need the mass of the beaker before you did anything, and then the mass of the beaker with the silver in it. So you would take the mass of your beaker, and I'm going to assume the mass of the beaker was originally 41.8 grams, and then the mass of the beaker with the silver in it was 42.48 grams. So if I subtract those two values, I would get 0.68 grams of silver. All right, what we're going to do is take those values and then convert those to moles. So on this slide, we're going to do those calculations for converting our grams um, to moles. So as we said, we had 0.21 grams of copper from the lab. So to convert that to moles, at this point you should know this, we're going to put grams of copper in the denominator, moles of copper in the numerator, whoops, copper, let's get rid of that so it's not confusing, one mole of copper is 64 grams from the periodic table, and if we do that calculation we'll get 0 .0033 moles of copper. For our silver, we said that we had um, 0.68 grams of silver. So again, we want to get rid of grams. So we've got grams of silver in the denominator, converting to moles. One mole of silver from the periodic table is 108 grams. When we do that math, we're going to get 0 0.0063 moles of silver. All right, the next step in this process is to determine the mole ratio between copper and silver. So we'll do that next. Okay, to determine that mole ratio, what we're going to do is find the moles of silver compared to the moles of copper. So when we find a mole ratio, whenever it says the ratio of silver to copper, it's always the moles of the first thing mentioned over the moles of the second thing mentioned. In other words, all the ratio is is a division of the first thing over the second thing. So we'll take our moles of silver, which we said were 0 .0063, and I'm going to write moles of silver here just so we keep track, over our moles of copper, which is 0 .0033, and again, that's moles of copper. If we do that math, in other words, 0 0.0063 divided by 0 0.0033, we're going to get 1.91, 1 
and I'm just going to put that over 1. So now our ratio here, again, of, of moles of silver to moles of copper, we have 1.91 moles of silver for every 1 mole of copper. Now remember, when we're, we're trying to figure out what to round to, what we want to round to is 0 0.2, 0 0.25, 0 0.33, 0 0.5, and of course we have, you know, just rounding to 1. So whatever our point whatever is closest to, let's put 0.75 there also. That's what we're going to round to. So clearly 1.9 is you know, rounding up to the next one digit. So we can round 1.9 up to 2. So what we have is a 2 to 1 mole ratio of silver to copper. So what we want to do then, if we have 2 moles of silver for every 1 mole of copper, what we're trying to do is figure out what these numbers are in the balanced equation. Now when we actually balanced the equation, what we did, and here let me change my pen color to make a little bit of difference. What we did when we balanced this equation was I said we're going to put a 2 there and we're going to put a 2 there. Now it's implied that that is a 1 and that is a 1. So what we're trying to do here is prove experimentally that our mole ratio is 2 to 1. Because remember, we said in class that when we read equations, they're written in terms of moles. So this balanced equation tells us that we have one mole, we need one mole of copper for every two moles of silver. And in our lab, that's what we found. Now, more than likely when you do this, yours probably won't end up to be exactly one to two. However, you're going to put those numbers, whatever you found, in this equation, uh, that would be our experimental balanced equation. Okay, so here's what you need to do. On the sheet that you received in class, you're going to fill out number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7, and 8, and I almost spelled produced right there. Alright, so anyway, you're going to do those on your lab sheet. Um, and you're going to hand those in. Now I'm going to talk about the two slides for number seven and eight um, next. All right, for number five and six, what you're going to do is determine if all of your silver, um, if after, actually if all the silver nitrate react, that should reacted. That should say uh, that should say silver nitrate reacted. All right, to do that, what you're going to do is you're going to start with the mass of silver nitrate that you started with. Now, I'm going to assume I started with exactly 1.5 grams of silver nitrate. And what I would like you to do is, is what we're going to, well, you're going to do the dimensional analysis to figure out how many moles of silver should have reacted. So, if you have 1.5 grams of silver nitrate, what we're going to do is convert that to moles. So the molar mass of silver nitrate is 170 grams silver nitrate per mole of silver nitrate. So our grams cancel and now we have moles of silver nitrate. Now we haven't really talked about this next step. However, if we take our unit moles of silver nitrate and put that in the denominator, what we find is that there is one silver for every silver nitrate. So we can say one mole of silver nitrate contains one mole of silver. So our moles of silver nitrate cancels and now if we do the math here we would wind up with 0 .0088 moles of silver. So if you remember from our lab we produced 0 .0063 moles of silver but we should have produced 0 .0088. So in the lab, you might want to explain why we didn't produce as much silver as we should have. In the last step of this process, what you're going to do is determine the value, or the dollar value, of the silver that you produced in the lab. And what you're going to do, you're going to figure this out on your own, 
but the conversions that you're going to use, we're going to use troy ounces here. So the conversions that you can use are one troy ounce is equivalent to 31 grams. And you can also use the conversion one troy ounce is equal to whoops <laughs> four dollars and ninety cents so what I want you to do is to use these conversions to determine the value of however many grams of silver you produced in the lab alright so you're gonna fill out that sheet um, you can ask me any questions that you have in class and then you will hand that in